Praise God. Thank you for joining us uh, this evening again for Bible study. We hope and pray that God has been good to you and that he has supplied um, all of your needs, that he's been a blessing to you, that you have been a blessing to others. Before we get into God's word tonight, let's go to him in prayer. Dear eternal God, our Father, Lord, how we love you and we thank you for all that you are. Um, we ask that you would just continue to Embrace us and keep us, O oh Lord, that we might um, be um, counted worthy, O oh Lord, to uh, be recipients, not only of just your blessings, but uh, to even be called your children. So we honor you, O oh Lord, and uh, as, as the word goes forward tonight, may you help us to understand what's, what's being declared and that we might apply it to our, uh, to our lives. We love you and we thank you in advance. Bless every caller, every listener. Every viewer, in Jesus' almighty name we pray. Praise God. So, so tonight, uh, we're going to walk in the book of uh, 1 Samuel, chapter 17. And I'm going to read just verse number 25. And I'm looking at the um, King James Version. 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse number 25. And our topic for discussion tonight is slain your Goliath, slain your Goliath. And once again, that's uh, 1 Samuel chapter uh, 17, verse number 25. And it reads this. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it, sh and, and it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him, with great riches, and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Bless God. Bless God. And that was uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25, chapter 17, verse 25. And we're talking about slaying your Goliath. And, and I read that particular piece of that, of this entire chapter, because that's the promise. That's the promise that was declared to anybody that would slay Goliath, um, that um, the king would uh, make... I give him great riches, that he would give him his daughter, which is a promise um, for inheritance, and then that he would free his household. And um, in essence, he would the entire house would be liberated from um, the um, from taxes, taxes and the, you know there was some exemptions that would come. So it was a major benefit in being the one that would slay this Philistine that has come to uh, come to the uh, brought forth on the arena to fight. We are either dealing with personal, professional, or spiritual issues in life. No matter where you are, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, no matter male, female, old, young, um, we all deal with personal, professional, and spiritual life issues. And the Goliath in the text, the Goliath is just another stumbling block. Goliath is just another burden. He's just another door, another bridge, another barrier that is between, set between you and your destiny. And we have to learn that whatever Goliath is, whether that is external or internal, we have to find the spiritual strength to be able to go through it. Um, every stumbling block, every barrier, every obstacle presents its way, same, same as every Goliath does. It speaks, it reveals itself, and then it engages. And that's the way our troubles are. They, they, they declare what they are. They try to instill fear. And then they try to engage. And this uh, particular passage, David and Goliath is no, is no different. So um, just to understand the backstory, the Bible gives us these um, great accounts of heroic activity so that we can understand that regardless of how large something is or regardless of how difficult situations or life is um, that none of those adversaries or none of those uh, occurrences are bigger than our God That's right. that we should be able to um, as, as Gwen says uh, see an opportunity for God to intervene in everything so no matter what the troubles um, are and no matter how often they come uh, we should be able to see God um, in those 
working in those so that we can be um, we can be free and get to our destination. So if your if your Goliath is um, presents itself and uh, and this and speaks and then engages, the the issue is is that you still have to get to your destination. You still have to do and become what God has created you to do and to become. You can't allow your struggle um, to hinder uh, your your path. You have to be able to find the way of escape. You have to be able to find the strength to um, muster up and believe that the God of Israel, the, 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 the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, uh, the King, the Creator, um, Elohim, Adonai, all of that, that he is able to um, bring you forward, regardless of how many times the, um, the, the Goliath, the trouble has shown up, regardless mm -hmm. of how many onlookers are trying to convince you that that's just too much for any one person to deal with or too much, too much pain, um, you have to remember what God that you serve. What God do you serve? Am I serving a God that is issuing out this fear or am I serving a God that says that he has, he, has, he has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Um, praise God. Praise God. So when we look at the text, I want to give you a bunch of, um, point out some scriptures to you. Because I told you that uh, the, the enemy, when your Goliath or your, your, your stumbling block or your barrier um, is um, in present, it does a few things. Um, so in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 4 through 7, in this particular text, you'll see that uh, Goliath has presented himself. He's made himself known. And the text talks about um, how he is, in verse number 4, he's a champion out of the camp of Philistines named Goliath the Gath. And it gives his height of six cubits and, and a span. It talks about his helmet is made of brass and mm -hmm. his, his arm coat made of nails and the weight of his coat is 5,000 shekels. It talks about um, the brass on his legs and the brass on his shoulders, his spear. It describes him how um, terrifying he can be, um, how great of an enemy he can be, how big of an adversary he can be so that he can um, convince you in some capacity just by his presence that you do not stand a chance mm -hmm. against this obstacle. So he presents himself. When you go back in that same chapter, if you look at verse number 8 through 10, um, this is when your Goliath, or whatever your Goliath, he begins to speak. Verse number 8 um, says that he, he stood and he cried to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why are ye come out and set your battles on array? Am I not the Philistine, the servant of Saul? Am not I the Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man. Let him come down to me. If he's able to fight me and kill me, we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him, he'll kill and kill him. Thou shalt be my servants and serve us. So not only does it show himself, his physical statue and how big um, he can be, but he also engages you in conversation, trying to convince you. Um, that there is no way, there's no chance that you can come and stand up against me because this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. And how dare you try to come against me? I, I am, uh, per se, I am the baddest uh, thing in the jungle. I am the, the biggest adversary. I'm your worst nightmare. And if I defeat you, you're going to be my servants. If I defeat you, you're going to be my slaves. If I defeat you, you and your entire kingdom will have to kneel down to me. So he tries to instill this, this fear um, to even talk you out of the considering the idea of engaging your enemy. And then he does, like I said, he does three things. He, pre he presents, he speaks, and then he engages. And verse number 43 and 44, this is when um, David has presented himself. And he tells David, am I, am I a dog that has come out with, with staves? Mm -hmm. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me, and I will give thy flesh into the flowers of the air and to the beasts of the field. So whatever your troubles are, right, 
If you think about them in the spiritual sense, as what we describe of speaking, presenting itself, speaking, and then engaging you, everything that we struggle with, it does those three things. Regardless of what they are, we don't usually recognize trouble until we really see it. And then once we see it, we begin to look at it and examine it and talk ourselves, or allow it to talk us into what it can do or what it will do and what will we do. And then it begins to um, engage us. It begins to try to impact, influence us from whatever destination um, that we are, um, that God has declared is ours. But our job is to remember. Our job is to um, go back and, and recount, recall what God had already done before in the past mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. David, in the, in the text, David was minding his own business. David was at, at home. All of his brothers were at, the, were at the war on the front, and he was at home about to feed the sheep. And he gets up and his father told him, take this to your brother. So he has an opportunity to get there and he gets to see what's going on. And when he gets there, he finds these men that are soldiers that are supposed to be trained and they're supposed to be the elite of the elite. And, and they're all coward um, because they fear this one man that has presented himself. He's shown that he's, uh, some texts say that he's nine foot over nine foot tall, that he's presented himself that they see the weapons of warfare that he's yielding and that he's, that he's got these great pieces of armor on and, and, and they're afraid um, because he's called out one of them. And David, being just a young boy, the Bible describes him as ruddy and the smallest mm -hmm. of the herd, of the litter. Mm -hmm. uh, being a young boy looks at them and asks them, how is it that you allow this one Philistine, this uncircumc uncircumcised Philistine, to come against uh, uh, the God of Israel. We have to remember that when, when trouble arises, um, that we still belong to God. That even though um, wicked, evil, destruction, mayhem, chaos, pain, trouble, whatever those things are, even though when those things try to uh, knock on our door and come in, we still have to remember um, that, the, that God says that he has his angels encamped around us at all That's times right. and that he's protecting us, that he has a head of protection over us. But we have to remember who we are. We have to remember whose we are and what he has done um, for us in the past. So David, this young David, this young boy David, small as David tells um, tells King Saul, you know, um, when I was out in the field, mm -hmm. there came um, a lion and a bear, and they tried to snatch one of my lambs. So my lamb is they just tried to the enemy tried to take one of my dreams, tried to steal mm -hmm. one of my hopes, some of my ambition, and. And he said, when he tried to take the, the lion, the lion and the bear tried to steal one of my lambs, I snatched them by the beard and I slayed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine mm -hmm. does not stand a chance against the living God. So when the enemy speaks, we have to speak. When the enemy presents himself, we have to present God. When the enemy engages, we have to engage according to how God tells us to engage. Because we have to get to the promise. See, David had asked, what will happen to, to the person that slays Goliath? What, what, will, what will occur? What will the process look like? I mean, how does, does their life impact it by killing this uh, this Philistine that has come up and has uh, offended not just the kingdom, not just Israel, mm -hmm. but he's offended my God. That's right. So what will happen to the person that puts the, um, that, that rectifies the name 
of the Almighty God. What will happen? That's when it gets to verse 25. That he who kills him, he will, the king will enrich, give him great riches, and give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. That was the destiny. That was the purpose. That was the, that was the, um, the prize, the reward. Thank you. That was the reward um, for doing what he already knew that he could do. So he tells the king this. He can do this and he can, he can do that because he's already experienced it. Um, one high while, while he was washing his sheep. And Saul is um, impressed by the tenacity, by the spunk, by the courage of this young man. So he believes him. And the Bible says that Saul gave David his armor and his sword. But David says that I haven't proved this. So let me say, let me tell you what that means for us in the spiritual and in the natural. Sometimes not everybody's way of, of going through or coming out of a situation is what's applicable for us if we haven't heard from God. Mm -hmm. There are some issues that uh, can't be repaired by the same measure that somebody else went and repaired them unless we have heard from God. So David says that I didn't hear from God to put on your armor. I have to wait till I'm proving it and then God will give me my very own armor. Yeah. But what I do have is what I'm accustomed with. See, what I'm accustomed with, I've been using it since I was a, since, since since I learned to pick it up and, I, and figured out that it was a good weapon for me to defend the very thing that that my father, my my physical earthly father, put me over in charge of. So I'm comfortable with this little bitty slingshot and these rocks. So when, when I get into trouble, back to you and I, when we get into trouble. Uh, we should be comfortable with dealing with trouble according to how God has brought us out of trouble mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. We just have to remember what God brought us through and not be concerned about the, the Goliath, the stumbling block, the enemy, the trouble that is standing in front of us. But remember who God says that we are. God called David a conqueror before they wrote songs about David. They, God called David victorious uh, be, before he won mighty battles as the king. So God was instilling already the virtues that David needed to become this great warrior for God. He was already instilling them at a very young age. So for you and I, the things that we are searching for are probably already within us because when we were babies, we overcame what was applicable for a baby. And as we move and progress to adults and uh, young adults and adults, that same progression happens to um, our skill set, our level of defending, our level of praising, worship, all of that is enhanced as we grow. Mm -hmm. So just like David, he was victorious then, he still will be victorious now. But we have to do as the enemy does. We have to speak when the enemy declares himself. We have to um, show ourselves when the enemy shows himself, and we have to engage. So David says, "You know, I can do this. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take these uh, these five stony things, stony stony bricks, stony rocks." Verse forty-seven. Or 40, I'm sorry, said I, I, he took the staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones out of the brook and he put them in his shepherd bag and he even had his scrip and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. For, some folks say, and we don't know this to be true, but we do know that trouble and the enemy are very persistent. Mm -hmm. We do know that um, evil never rests, that this... It's very constant. So it, all, it, it, it behooves us to, to always be, to be ready, <laughs> to be prepared. So David was just getting ready just in case. Mm -hmm. He didn't pick five of them up because he believed that he was going to miss. He picked five of them up because just in case four other folks decided that killing the Philistine wasn't enough. He had already had five mm -hmm. things ready for those other, other four. So he was just getting ready. So it, 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 it behooves us to stay ready 
so that we don't have to get ready. Mm -hmm. So he says that he took five smooth stones out of the brook and he put them in the shepherd bag and even the scripts and the sling was in his hand and he went out after um, the Philistine. And this is when the Philistine starts to uh, groan and he starts to try to, to uh, hurl more insults at David. And he told him, and it came to pass, the Philistine arose and came and drew know to David. And he said, toward the Philistines, uh, verse number 40, what was that? 43. And the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you have brought staves? And the Philistine cursed David's gods again and told him what he's going to do to him. And David did not fear because David knew that God was with him. That even with a, um, a sling, that David had victory over his enemy. Mm -hmm. So the Bible said that David ran, ran towards the Philistine. As he drew his sword, uh, David drew his stones, and David put a stone in one of his slings, and he slung it toward the Philistine, and he smote him in the head. Now remember that the Philistine is wearing an armor, so he has a helmet on. Mm -hmm. The idea that a stone is able to pierce um, a piece of armor requires that God be in that stone. Mm -hmm. Because that helmet has been hit many times by many swords. And the metal is more uh, durable than the stone. The stone would naturally bust into pieces because it's uh, a clay formation or a piece of it's rock. Um, but because God has ordained it. Mm -hmm. See, whatever your weapon is, whether your weapon is uh, prayer, whether your weapon is fasting, where, whether your weapon is, is just standing in faith and gap, whatever your weapon is... God has already God. ordained it to pierce the adversary right in the head. Whatever that is. So you have to be, like I said, you have to be accustomed to using whatever God has already said has brought you victory in the past. Mm -hmm. So David slings his slingshot and he hits him right in the middle of his head. And the enemy goes down. And he doesn't stop there. Because David, David was going to assure um, that this adversary, this enemy that had this tribe that has insulted God would not stand again. So David takes the enemy's sword and cuts his head off, slices his head off. And then the rest of the army pursues the rest of the Philistines mm -hmm. and slaughters them. When David comes back, Saul is impressed. And he says, who is this young man? And the, 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 the priest of... Uh, of, uh, of Saul goes and gets them and he asks him who he is and David said I'm the son of Jesse the Benjamite mm -hmm. whenever you understand who you are mm -hmm. when they ask you how you came through it's not going to be in hesitation it's going to be without a shadow of a doubt I came through by God yes. I am the son the daughter I am the heir. I've been adopted. I've been washed in the blood. I've been redeemed. I've been made righteous by the, by the, uh, by the blood of the Lamb. That's how I was able to overcome cancer. That's how I was able to come di diabetes. That's how I was able to overcome uh, divorce and financial issues. That's how I was able uh, to overcome molestation. That's how I was able to come overcome being abandoned. That's how I was able to overcome being lied on, being cheated on. That's how I was able to overcome all of these things that everyone else stood around and said, that's too big for you to fight. Mm -hmm. It's too many of them for you to go up against. You're just a little dog. But David said, no, what you don't see as that in the little dog lives the biggest dog. Mm -hmm. And his name is Adonai, the king of kings, <laughs> the creator of all things. Because he understood that, I, that, that God has already given me victory once. And this one right here is just another victory proving itself as God takes me to another junction in life. From destiny to destiny to destiny purpose to purpose, from praise to praise. Mm -hmm. God is constantly moving. So identify what your, what your Goliath is. No matter who you are, we all deal with them. Personal, professional, spiritual. We all have someone, something 
standing, trying to defy the very God that we are praying to, the very God that we are asking for help from, the very God that said that he never leave us nor forsake us. Something, someone is trying to discourage you from getting the reward that the king has said is yours. But you have to remember who you are to slay your Goliath. David came from a family of six other brothers, right? It was six, and he made, he made number seven. Um, big family, loving father, but he was the only one that stood out in the time uh, of need. So it might be you. You might be the one that needs to stand up and stand out so that your family so that your family is free, so that your, uh, the reward that God says is for you becomes... Jesse had eight sons. Jesse had eight sons, thank you. So that the reward that God says for you is given for you. You might be the one that need to stand up against all of the odds mm -hmm. and let God be God. The beautiful thing that I know about faith is that it doesn't require a whole bunch, but for you to believe. And if you believe um, that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you ask or all you think, everything that is standing in front of you is just an opportunity for God to intervene. Mm -hmm. And David, and David knew it. David was set up for it. He was built for it. He was created for it. And he lasted and endured. Uh, the temptation and the test. So the question is, how long will you let your David not only cuss you out, <laughs> your, your Goliath, mm -hmm. how long will you let your Goliath um, insult. insult you, your God, and your family before you stand up and show, who, show him who you are, who you are. Praise God. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we, we come again thanking you for uh, the reminder um, that no matter how small we are, no matter where we come from, um, no matter what our occupation is, or no matter what we've been taught um, in the past, that, that every victory that has been um, mm. lined up for us is going to come by overcoming an adversary. So, Lord, we believe you that you have already given us victory over that. As your word says, that you've already overcome the things of this world. So let us, let us learn to believe that, God, that you've already overcome this thing. And all I have to do is stand up when no one else will. All I have to do is engage when nobody else will. All I have to do is believe you that you are the, uh, the author and the finisher of my faith. So, Lord, we come, we come saying to forgive us for being distracted by how big the mess is, by how troubling um, the problems seem to be. Forgive us um, for um, reacting and not responding um, by declaring um, that nothing is impossible um, for my God, that she, will, that she will be there when no one else is there, that you will be there and lift us up um, above our adversary. So let your will be done in us. We thank you, Almighty God, for everything that you are. May you keep us as we go forth from this day, reminding us of that all of our Davids, all of our Goliaths, Lord, all of our Goliaths um, have to kneel down and recognize that you are, um, that you are God, mm -hmm. that all of our Goliaths must meet their own demise for the things that they do to your children. We, we love you and we honor you. Forgive us of every sin of omission, commission, and blot out our iniquities and our transgressions that we might be whole, that we might be called righteous. It's in Jesus' name, let the church say, praise God. Praise God. Um, so Trinity will see you Sunday at 1115. For all those others, go find your place um, to worship and let God get his very best out of you. And just to um, reiterate that there is a David that lives in you. Um, Praise God. Praise God.
Good evening to you. Good, good night.